Hey Stacy. Hey, could you please bring in my next patient? Are they already in the waiting room? Yeah? Okay. Yeah, you can bring her in. I'm ready now. Thank you. Hello. Hi, come take a seat. I'm just finishing up some notes, okay? Yeah, just come get comfy. Um, I'll be with you in just a sec, okay? Thank you. Okay. Right. Okay. And we are done. Um, great. I will also bring up... Um, did you receive a referral to come and see me today? Yeah, was that through your GP? Okay. Do you mind then if I just bring that up on my computer and we can have a look at the referral together? Yep. Great, absolutely. Um, while I get all this set up, um, did you, would you like our receptionist to come bring you a cup of tea or water, something to eat perhaps? No, okay. No worries. Um, if you change your mind, please do let me know, okay? Yeah, no, it's not a bother at all. Alrighty, yes, yeah, so. Get this page up here. How'd you go getting here today? Didn't have any issues finding the place? I know the parking can be a little bit hectic sometimes. Yeah, was it full? You parked on the street. Yeah, okay. Is that where you had to do um, paid parking there or? Oh, you found somewhere that was free. Excellent, okay. Great. All right, so I've just got your referral up here now. Um, I'm just gonna have a little look through that, okay? So, I can see some of the information here. Okay. So you're having some concerns with anxiety. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So you just finished university not that long ago. Yeah. And what were you studying there? Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, so you're about to start your first job as a doctor. That's incredible. You should be so proud of yourself. Okay, let me just put it in here. There's a few spots that are just missing some information. So. Okay. All right, so you got your first job to be a doctor. Is that just, is that at the hospital? At the, mm-hmm. Oh, at a local general practice. Okay, amazing. And which one is that located at? Oh, so the local one. Okay. Oh, that would be amazing. So it's only, what, like a five minute drive? Yeah, okay, great. You've been having some anxiety around starting your new job, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Well, do you want to tell me a little bit about it then? Mm hmm I'm just going to be taking some more notes throughout our session today. Is that okay? Okay, great. Thank you. Right, so... Mm hmm So just finding yourself really, really anxious before you're starting this job. You don't know what to expect. Feeling a lot of pressure. Okay. okay. Is it something you're still feeling passionate about? Something that you still want to do? I know sometimes people might go all the way through their studies and decide that they are not actually happy with that chosen path and sometimes people will completely 
um, sometimes people will never enter the job that they've even studied for. Okay. Mm hmm Okay, so it sounds like you still definitely want to be a doctor. And that's something you're very passionate about. Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. just feel like there is a lot of pressure on you to get it right mm -hmm. you don't want anyone getting sick because of you mm -hmm. yeah can you tell me a bit more about that yeah okay. yeah so you just don't want to make any mistakes are you a bit of a perfectionist by chance? Do you like to get things perfect straight away as soon as you start them? Yeah, okay. I, I thought that might be the case. Okay. And what happens to you normally when, if you are a perfectionist, um, if you start something new, embark on a new hobby, perhaps, and if it's really hard and you don't get it perfect the first try, what usually happens? Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you feel like you stick it out and keep persevering or do you feel like oh, it's too hard and you, you give up? Okay. Okay, so you feel very prone to giving up and quitting things when they're too hard. definitely be one of the problems with being a perfectionist. Um, it can be very hard to actually, you know, get really good at something because we don't want to start from the, the beginning when we're not good. We just want to already be perfect. That can be very challenging, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like as well, uh, from the concerns that you've been telling me, that maybe you have a bit of imposter syndrome you heard of that before you have yeah so you resonate with that a little bit okay so just feeling a bit fake mm -hmm. yeah. like you're not actually as good as anybody else mm -hmm. like somebody's gonna find you out and realize that that you're not as good that you're a phony or something yeah okay yep yeah, yeah. that definitely sounds like imposter syndrome to me um, but what I do have is a worksheet that we can complete together so we can uh, answer some questions a little bit and just determine um, how bad this imposter syndrome might be for you okay and we can explore that a little bit further Now. Okay, I'm just gonna get a few things ready. Are you sure you're still okay there? You're still comfortable? Okay, I'm just gonna have a sip of my tea as well while I'm here. Are you sure you don't want Stacey to make you a cup of tea? Oh, okay. Okay, you don't like tea. No worries. No worries at all. That's fine. A water or something, perhaps? Yeah, okay. Stacy. Hi, yeah. Um, could you please make our lovely patient here today just a glass of water, please? Thank you so much. Cheers, okay. Alright, so, while well, Stacy's getting that for you, I'm just going to set up some of the um, paperwork here so we can do this worksheet together. Yeah. Let me just find it here. I think it's in the, the back section somewhere.
<clears throat> I'm sorry if I'm clearing my throat a lot. I um, was really sick last week. I'm still just on the back end, you know, where you're like almost really good, but you just just that little bit off. Oh, you were sick recently too. Oh, something is going around right now, I swear. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Sorry, I'm just gonna that down. Okay. Oh, here, Stacey. Thank you so much. Yep, could you just pop it down on the table there? Yep. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Alright, so feel free to have some water while I just finish getting everything set up here. to start off with okay and you will answer the questions um, by giving them a rating between one and five one being not true at all three being you know sometimes true and five being very true okay that makes sense okay great so and then we'll tally them all up at the end together okay so number one I'm afraid People important to me may find out that I'm not as capable as they think I am. Okay, so how true do you feel about that statement? A four. Okay. All right, question two. It's hard for me to accept compliments or praise about my intelligence or accomplishments. So hard to accept compliments or praise. Okay, so four. Sure. At times, I feel my success has been due to some kind of luck. my ability to those around me and think they may be more intelligent than I am. On a scale of one to five. Okay. So a three or a four you think. What one do you feel resonates more with you? Mm -hmm. sometimes think I obtained my present position or gained my present success because I happened to be in the right place at the right time or knew the right people. Number three. Okay. Next question. If I receive a great deal of praise and recognition for something I've accomplished, I tend to discount the importance of what I've done. Do you tend to discount the importance when you've achieved something? So maybe like a three for that one? Right. Next question. I tend to remember the incidents in which I have not done my best more than those times that I have done my best. So are you remembering your failures? more than your successes. Five, yep. Yeah. Okay. If I'm going to receive a promotion or gain recognition of some kind, I hesitate to tell others until it is an accomplished fact. You want me to read it again? Yeah, sure, absolutely. I know it takes um, 
you got to wrap your head around some of these. Okay. If I'm going to receive a promotion or gain recognition of some kind, I hesitate to tell others until it is an accomplished fact. Okay. So maybe a sure. And the last one here. Sometimes I feel or believe that my success in my life or in my job has been the result of some kind of error, like some cosmic mistake. Five. All right, so let's tally all that up, shall we? Um, just give me a second here. So. You got a score of 37. Okay. And let's see here. If you total between 36 to 45, which is what you got, you got in that flat range here, it means that you have serious imposter syndrome. So the levels were you do not have imposter syndrome you have it moderately, or you have serious imposter syndrome, okay? So that is very telling that you definitely do have imposter syndrome and are really struggling with that idea of feeling like you recognized or earned your place in, in getting this position. Is that right? Yeah. How does that make you feel getting that, that result? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it makes you a little bit sad. Yeah. Yeah, well, it sounds like you've worked really, really hard to get where you are. And, you know, from these results here, it seems like you're really discounting yourself and your efforts that you've put in. Yeah, well, we can definitely discuss that more in future sessions. Um, I do have as well one other part here that we can complete together um, if you're up for it and this next section is all about so what type of imposter syndrome do you have because there's different types so how many questions are there and this one has 20 questions okay um Alright, do you feel ready to start? Okay, and this one as well, also same as the last one, you answer the questions um, rating it from 1 to 5, okay? So same as before, 1 being not true or 5 being very true, okay? Great, so number 1 do you feel firmly that you need to accomplish things on your own? Five, okay. Have you ever been accused of being a micromanager? You have? Yeah. And four? Okay. Do you stay later at the office than the rest of your team, even past the point that you've completed the day's necessary work? pushing yourself harder than what is required of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so four. Okay. Were you told frequently as a child that you were the smart one in your family or peer group? Okay, so you think that one's actually not as true. What number would you give it, do you think? So more, more like a two. All right. Mm. Yeah. Right. Okay. So you were considered not the smart one in your family, in fact, and you felt like you had a lot to prove. Mm -hmm. Like you had to work harder than everybody else to get where you're at. Okay. I can 
let's see how maybe that leads into some of these imposter syndrome tendencies for you. Yeah, okay, let's keep going. Number five, um, do you shy away from applying to job postings unless you meet every single educational requirement? Do you shy away from applying to job postings unless you meet every single educational requirement? Yeah. Five. Okay. Number six. When you miss the insanely high mark on something, do you accuse yourself of not being cut out for your job and ruminate it, ruminate on it for days? Five. Okay. Number seven. When you're faced with a setback, does your confidence tumble because you're not performing well provokes a feeling of shame? Mm -hmm. Okay, so four. Number eight. Do you frame requests in terms of the requirements of the project rather than your needs as a person. Okay, so really prioritizing the work over your well-being. Okay. So maybe a three. Sure. Do you feel like your work must be 100% perfect 100% of the time? You feel very guilty of that. Mm -hmm. So a five, you think? Sure. Number 10, are you constantly seeking out trainings or certifications because you think you need to improve your skills in order to succeed? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the three. Eleven, do you get stressed when you're not working and found and find downtime completely wasteful? Three, okay. Do you often avoid challenges because it's so uncomfortable to try something you're not great at? Four. Sure. Okay. I'm just gonna go to the next. Number 13, do you shudder when someone says you're an expert? Do you shudder when someone says you're an expert? Three. Have you left, sorry, next question. Have you left your hobbies and passions fall by the wayside, sacrificed to work? Okay, so you don't have a lot of work experience but even with with university studies perhaps yeah okay okay so maybe four sure number 15 do you avoid group projects whenever possible and have trouble delegating work when you do okay so not so much with that one what would you give that two 16. Do you have great difficulty delegating? Even when you are able to do so, do you feel frustrated and disappointed in the results? Okay, so you'd say that when other people make mistakes, you're more forgiving, but not when it's your own mistakes. Okay, sure. So we'll put up for that one. Mm -hmm. okay, so two. 17. Do you feel like you haven't truly earned your title despite numerous degrees and achievements? So you feel pressured to work harder and longer than those around you to prove your worth? Five. Okay. Do you have a track record of getting straight A's? or gold stars in everything you do. 
So not so much when you were a child, but by the time you went to university. Yeah. Okay, okay, I see what you mean. So you would give that a... Okay. 19. I don't need anyone's help. Does that sound like you? Okay. Even if you've been in your role for some time, you re can you relate to feeling like you still don't know enough? And I know you haven't been in your role for some time just yet, but what about even when you were at university, um, like in your last year, or, um, you know, doing your placements, gaining that experience? Yeah, so a five, okay. Now, what we're gonna do here, we have to total our scores, but for each color. And every question that we did has a designated color assigned to it, okay? So for the, f I'm just gonna do some maths here, add up some numbers, um, please get comfy. Um, so the first section was yellow, so I'm just gonna add up all of the yellow questions first, okay? Okay, so... That's fine if you have to check something on your phone, that's totally okay. I'm gonna be a minute anyway. Okay, so green, that's at that one over here. We got it. Seven. Right, you're great. So your highest was 16, and you received it in yellow, green, and grey categories, okay? Um, so, just yellow, sorry, what did I just say? Yellow, green, and grey categories. So yellow, green, and grey. And what I'm going to do is read out these three sections 
for you, okay? So it's just on the back here. Um, right, so for the yellow section that you've got a 16 for, yellow is a perfectionist category. Let me just put this down. Okay. So for the perfectionist category, it says this. For this type, success is really satisfying because they believe they could have done even better, but that's neither productive nor healthy. Owning and celebrating achievements is essential if you want to avoid burnout, find contentment and cultivate self-confidence. Learn to take your mistakes in stride, viewing them as a natural part of the process. In addition, push yourself to act before you're ready. Force yourself to start the project you've been planning for months. Truth is, there will never be the perfect time. And your work will never be 100% flawless. The sooner you're able to accept that, the better off you'll be. What do you think about that section? It sounds like you. Okay. Do you feel like... It had some good advice to offer you there and saying that you know your work is never going to be a hundred percent flawless and especially going into this new job you will make mistakes you absolutely cannot be perfect when you start a new job no matter how confident you think you are you won't be perfect and and that's okay and it's finding a space in your mind to be very gentle with yourself and remind yourself that it's okay to make mistakes while you're learning. Yeah. I'm going to read your next category now. So your next one um, was the green category and that's called super person. And it says, imposter workaholics are actually addicted to the validation that comes from working, not to the work itself. Start training yourself to veer away from external validation. No one should have more power to make you feel good about yourself than you. Even your boss when they give your project the stamp of approval. On the flip side, learn to take constructive criticism seriously not personally as you become more attuned to internal validation and able to nurture your inner confidence that states you're competent and skilled you will you'll be able to ease off the gas as you gauge how much work is reasonable how do you feel about that one mm -hmm. Yep, so really finding that validation from within yourself and not just from others because then you're just going to be prone to people pleasing which especially going into your new job as a doctor it's going to make you burn out yeah yeah so you really need to be able to take care of yourself in this time and take on those mistakes and not not to take them personally Okay, I'm going to read your last um, category now, which is grey, and um, it's expert. So, and it says, It's true that there's always more to learn. Striving to bulk up your skill set can certainly help you make strides professionally and keep you competitive in the job market. But taken too far, the tendency to endlessly seek out more information can actually be a form of procrastination. Start practicing just in time learning. This means acquiring a skill when you need it. For example, if your responsibilities change rather than hoarding knowledge for false comfort. Realize there's no shame in asking for help when you need it. If you don't know how to do something, ask a co-worker. If you can't figure out how to solve a problem, seek advice from a supportive supervisor or even a career coach. 
Mentoring junior colleagues or volunteering can be a great way to discover your inner expert. When you share what you know, it not only benefits others, but also helps you heal your fraudulent feelings. So how do you feel about that last one? You feel like you do that? Trying to hoard knowledge? Mm hmm Yeah, okay. And then you're very hard on yourself when you can't remember it or when you need it. Yeah, and a lot of these things come with, with time and it's very different applying that, you know, that theory to practice. And you can, you can read something so many times over and over. It. you can do it in person and suddenly feel like you don't have that skill set anymore because it's really not integrated that mind to body and and that comes with with time unfortunately and um you know it also comes with experience and practice and i know those aren't things you may want to hear right now i know you would love to hear that you know you'll be perfect and you're not going to have any issues but we need to set you know, realistic standards for, for ourselves here and realistic goals. And absolutely, I'm positive that you will get there, okay? For sure. But it may be really hard at first and it may take some time to get used to it. It doesn't mean that every day is going to be hard and every day is going to be a struggle like you're a failure. It just means you're still learning and once you get over that initial hump that learning curve things will get a lot easier from there okay how do you feel about all these questions i've asked you today and talking about imposter syndrome Okay, so it's good to sort of put a name to all of these feelings and anxieties that you've been experiencing. Yep, now you, you know what it is, you can name it. Mm -hmm. And you can pull yourself up on it when when you are stuck in that, that loop in your head that keeps telling you that, you know, you're a phony, you're fake, you're not good enough. You can stop and pull yourself up and be like, oh, hang on. You know, I'm still learning. Hang on. You know, these things take time. And it's really important not to be too hard on yourself in those early days, okay? Okay. When do you start your new job? Next week, okay. Or would you like to book another appointment with me in maybe two weeks time? And you can tell me how it's going and how your first day was. I want to hear all about it, obviously. Uh-huh. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if you go out the front and talk to Stacy, you can book another appointment. Yes, I do have telehealth appointments as well. I understand you're going to be busy with your new job, if that makes more sense for you. Um, we can do a, a phone call or um, like a Zoom video call if you like, if you prefer that. Uh-huh. Okay, great. Thank you so much for coming in today. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Okay, bye-bye.